I'm here to tell you about the fantastic Name the Game series from Australian Football Video. Now there's over 200 games available, including final series, state games, night premierships and the best home and away matches of the 91 and 92 seasons. Not just the highlights, not just the last quarter, but a hundred minutes of top footy action. So pick up your free catalogue at any Brasher store. And remember, footy brings out the best in a person. Just going to kick for goal from about 45 metres out. Doesn't quite get the distance, but a good mark taken by Carey. He plays on oh. and kicks a shot. by Ross Smith, pushing and shoving going on. McAdam, oh, don't tell me McAdam's kick this. Yes. What a goal, what a goal, sensational. Oh, Mr. Roberts, he's out now the boundary line could be his ally here. Now he keeps it in. Oh, very lax defence, Robert oh. will kick a goal. Lip tack and the procession continues. Modra in front of Martin. Martin, a good spoil. Modra recovers, gives the handball. Magnificent footing of McGuinness. Gee, it's good to watch. Mick in the target. Lip tack running onto it. Can steady and go for goal and put it through. Archer's going to kick for goal from about 45 metres out. Doesn't quite get the distance, but a good mark taken by Carey. He plays on oh. and kicks a shot. And that's marked by Scott Lee. Oh, oh well, that says it all, Say doesn't no it? Say no more. Say no more. So North, their last chance to score another goal has been chopped off, and there's the sign.
So it's all over at Football Park. The Adelaide Crows have a resounding victory against North Melbourne. They've kicked 27-21, 183, North Melbourne, 5-6, 36. 147 point margin. Well, you can go through the goal kickers, Bruce, because there's a few of them on one side. The wounds were fresh and gaping. North Melbourne had been dealt a near fatal blow and the only way to recover was for the club to take a hard look at everyone involved. Outgoing coach Wayne Chilmerbush maintained his silence today, but general manager Ken Montgomery says it's now up to the players to lift and get behind the club. I, I believe that the players have to take a large part of the responsibility. Uh, if they haven't got any feeling for the club and for Shimmer, and emotion and spirit after yesterday's events, then there's something wrong with them. They should have a hard and long look at themselves. With the first round looming rapidly, the hardest task would be finding someone who not only wanted the job, but who was capable of turning the team around. The Kangaroos hierarchy found their man, coaching the Essendon Reserves. Former player and multi-premiership coach, Dennis Pagan was the man for the job. I was uh, minding my business, preparing for the uh, Essendon uh, season. Uh, club director rang me and said, look, um, the board would like to have a chat with you. Um, the news had just broken about uh, Wayne's departure. And I had a couple of days to uh, prepare myself. Luckily enough, I had done a lot of uh, work on preparing a submission for the Melbourne Football Club. And I knew at the time that uh, I went for the interview that Neil Barman already had the job. But I thought, look, still go ahead with it. You, it's good. It's good experience for you to sit down in front of their board. And um, I can remember staying up most of uh, Thursday night preparing what I had to do. And uh, um, there was a, an interview at uh, one of the directors' uh, uh, businesses on the Friday afternoon. And I went there, and I was sort of, uh, you know, you, you walk away and you say, "Gee, I hope I come across well." You never really know. And I had to go to training at Essendon, and I, and I wasn't able to say, any, say much. And uh, I got a phone call the next morning uh, on the way to a practice game and um, told me I had the job. I had to go over and see the board and they told me I had it. Well, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know whether to, to do the uh, Essendon Reserves job that day. I thought, you know, I thought about it a hell of a lot and it really worried me. And I thought, well, look, there was no one else there. You know, you're our professional coach. Um, you've got to do the best you can for that particular day for Essendon. So that's what I did. And uh, it was an amazing Saturday. The, the, the Essendon Reserves game finished. I had a cup of coffee with two of my closest mates. Um, at the rush down here and Greg Miller put a lot of files in my office on a Saturday afternoon. Um, it was amazing. I walked into the place and it, I hadn't been here for two years and I felt I hadn't been away from the place. I knew all about the culture, I knew all about the people at North Melbourne and we have got a special breed of supporters at North Melbourne and uh, it was just, you know, all systems go. There was a, uh, a briefing to the players and there was a, a, match, uh, a, a match committee uh, selection for the, for the practice game next day at Tatura. Um, there was a press conference. Um, I got home, totally exhausted at 11 o'clock that night, f fell asleep, sorry, put my head on the pillar and laid awake all night and I was up 6 o'clock the next morning and had to go to Chichura to play a practice game up there against Geelong. And uh, it was absolutely amazing when you think, look back at the chain of events that happened from the time I was appointed until I, until I got home probably 9 o'clock Sunday night. Despite his many years coaching in the lower ranks, Pagan could be excused for feeling nervous. I suppose I was nervous, but things happened that quickly. You didn't have a chance to uh, to think about your nerves. It was just all systems go. You know, you didn't have a, you couldn't stop for a minute. So I suppose it's the best thing to happen when you are uh, nervous to be fully occupied and, and thinking about the things you had to do. I so I clearly remember um, my mind going too fast from my mouth, and there was just so many things I wanted to do in such a short time. But it, and, and eventually, it, uh, you know, after a couple of days, it settled and got into some sort of routine. Yeah, I'd coached the, coached the club for 10 years as, as an under-19 coach and obviously had a lot of uh, uh, time with the, a lot of the guys on the list now and I suppose probably 50 or 60% of the guys, maybe a bit more, um, had come through the under-19s and uh, they knew a little bit about Dennis Pagan, I knew a little bit about them, so it probably was an advantage. With a new coach came a new captain, the second youngest man to lead a club in AFL history. We are no longer the baby kangaroos, you know, like... We've all played three, four, five, six years of uh, league footy, so we can't, we can't uh, make that excuse anymore. We've just got to go on with the job this year. And despite his tender years and North's lack of leaders, Kerry expects his mates to get behind him and not leave all the job to him. It was a great honour. Um, a lot of people are saying that there's added pressure and things like this, um, but I don't think so. I think you know there's about 10 guys that have got to lead the club this year, and if, if we all do that, we'll go up. 
The Fosters Cup thrashing at the hands of the Crows and the subsequent departure of Wayne Schimmelbush left morale at rock bottom. Many football pundits went as far as to say that the players must shoulder the responsibility for Shimmer's axing. Well, I suppose if you're not successful, I think everyone's got to, got to uh, share the, re, um, the responsibility. And, and we weren't successful last year. And I suppose not only the players, everyone involved with the club has, has had, had a burden. And uh, I suppose they had to share a bit of the blame. There was no blood on Pagan's hands, but he can remember feeling equally as shell-shocked. I can remember sitting down and watching it uh, at home and I thought, um, you know, I was really, really focused on Essendon season and I tried to watch the North Melbourne game without any emotion. But, you know, you've, you've been there a long while. You know, as a player and as a coach, over 20 years, it's hard to sort of uh, take that away from him. I was, uh, I suppose, when I sat down and watched it, I became very emotional about it and thought, gee, we're better than this. And uh, I always believed that. Not at that stage did I think I'd be coaching them, but I can remember thinking, gee, North are much better than this. It was a daunting task. How would he lift the morale of his team in time for the first game? Well, I suppose it's just a natural thing. You, you, the things that you've learned over the journey yourself, and I have done a big apprenticeship, um, I've got some basic uh, philosophies on coaching and what it should be about. I've got some, uh, um, some structures I put in place uh, out in the ground and uh, to our guys' credit, um, they really carried it out to a T and, and I suppose if they, if they were blamed last year for what happened, they've got to take all the credit this year because they were, I, in my opinion, they were sensational and, and left no stone unturned and uh, really turned it around in, in, a, in, a very, uh, in a very short time. So what exactly is the pagan coaching philosophy? It's pretty basic, um, you know, I, I think uh, coaching's uh, built around three things. Um, communication, I like to think that I do communicate well. Uh, man management, getting people to do what you want them to do. And, and hopefully teaching them something on the training track each night. And, uh, you know, uh, I think we've done that. With a fairly successful run of practice matches under their belts, how was Pagan approaching the first match? I'm a great believer and very confident in the, in the, in the players' ability, and I think we have a chance with every game we go out. And I knew uh, Brisbane would have been keen as mustard, and uh, they obviously were. Um, we just wanted to win the game. We just wanted to be in front when the siren went. And uh, I was so happy at the end of the uh, day that we had four points in, in in round one of the year. It was a high scoring game, um, obviously um, Brisbane a young side, very enthusiastic and keen and uh, uh, with, the, with the right blend of experience through it and uh, you know, I knew it was going to be hard. I suppose Brisbane played their best football in the, in the first part of the year. Um, we knew it was going to be tough, um, we knew we were going to have to be on the job uh, and, and it turned out to be a real battle. Well, I just wanted to get a win, win up first of all. Um, we had very good practice match form from the, from the, the, the moment I took over, we, you know, we defeated uh, um, Footscray, um, we, we defeated Collingwood out here and there was, a, there was a game at Arden Street here and all our supporters and it was back like the old days, there was probably eight or 9,000 here. Our practice match form was good. Um, the club needed four points. We'd, we'd uh, promised so much on a lot of occasions. We had to start the year off on four points and I'll be honest with you, all I really wanted at that stage was four points. Even after just one game, Pagan knew that Longmire and Carey were in for a great year. John was really on fire. I could see that Wayne in his practice match form was going to have a good year also and uh, they both um, proved to be key players for us you know, uh, throughout the year, probably kicking probably 140 goals between them. Although it was only the second game of the year, the narrow loss to the Saints hurt both the players and the coach. After the game, Pagan told the football media... It was something that, was, that I'd like to keep in-house. Um, there were a few guys who didn't do the things that we wanted them to do. And it, look, it was a, a, a very important game for us. I suppose at the 32-minute mark, scores were level. And a couple of things happened that, uh, during the course of the game that we, uh, we want to keep in-house. And, uh, 
you know, it was terrific. It was, it was not, it was no big deal about it. I can assure you that. It was just a couple of things that uh, um, uh, guys did that went against the, the our rules and, and framework. We wanted to get it clear and um, and everyone have a firm understanding that that sort of stuff w wasn't going to help us at all. One win and one loss. Did he know what his side was capable of? You couldn't get a line through the form. No one knew, um, you know, who was going to be the good sides or not. We just wanted to make sure that we kept going forward. And uh, even though we were defeated, I thought we played well enough to win. And you know, St Kilda were on fire that day. You know, with the uh, Winmar playing through the midfield, and uh, you know, I can remember uh, uh, people like uh, Harvey and, and Winmar. Did, you know, played a great game for um, for St Kilda. I like to think that we, uh, you know, um, obeyed and played within the framework of our game plan and, and, and team rules, and uh, sure that helped us play. Our persistence and our uh, determination and desire, and it was a, it was a funny point of the season. I can remember when North hit the front, um, probably 20 minutes into, or maybe 15 minutes into the last quarter. It, it was a Monday game, and a lot of North Melbourne supporters were in the outer at Geelong. It was a pretty full house, and, when, and I can't remember. I think it might have been a John Longmire goal. The roar came across from the outer. I remember sitting in the coach's box, and the first time I'd experienced this from the North supporters, it sort of made the hairs on my neck stand up. And it was, it's, a, it's a, a feeling I'll never forget because it was, you know, um, the, the, the feeling and the support, you could really feel it. it was, the, the atmosphere was amazing. I don't know if I was the only one who felt it, but just the, when Johnny kicked that goal, the roar just came across the ground, and it, and it probably took a second um, from the time it started to get across the ground, and it was a, it was a funny feeling. North Melbourne might have one of the smallest cheer squads, but that doesn't stop them influencing the game. They're a special breed. Um, they've got, they've got a, a mixture of a lot of elderly people and a lot of young, enthusiastic people. I think North Melbourne this year have got the biggest increases at their games per, per person than any other team. The Geelong win had the players on top of the world. We were training um, uh, like men possessed and it was carrying through to our games. Um, you know, I was just so pleased that we, and you could feel the uh, crescendo and the, and, the, and the wave building and uh, gee, you know, we were confident in ourselves and believed that we were, uh, we, we, were, we were capable of beating any side that we played against. The Cats were a hot favourite for the finals and after the ruse knocked them off, Dennis Pagan was being hailed as a messiah. Did this sort of praise embarrass him? I'd rather not talk about it, to put it like that. You know, I, th I think if, uh, if you're doing anything good, you shouldn't be telling other people, they should be telling you. That's, that's my philosophy on it anyway. Well, I always perceived Melbourne as a good side, and I had a lot, lot of respect for Neil Barham as a coach. Um, they'd, had a, they'd had a bad run. I think they may have played Hawthorne and got beaten just a couple of weeks earlier by 10 points out at Waverley. Um, when we played them, I think they'd, they hadn't had a win at that stage. We, we, and as it turned out, it was a very tough game. Um, you know, it was a very exciting game to watch. I can remember our uh, um, defensive and pursuit skills, like tackling and shepherding and uh, uh, chasing and spoiling and, and, and blocking was first class. And I think at the end of the day, we, won out, we, we ran out winners by 25 points and it was a, a very good effort. I didn't realise that at that stage, um, whether we were a good side or Melbourne were going to be a good side, but I suppose in the weeks to come, it, it highlighted both that uh, Melbourne was a good side and so was North Melbourne. Racing after this Craig Scholl, so plenty of runners for North at the moment. Carey at the back, oh, he's marked that miraculously. Still Schwartz, the kick to the half for line. There he is again, Carey. Carey gets it to Stevens. Stevens on the left foot, fires it at goal. Right through the middle to North Melbourne for a goal. Played nine games for the Roos in his debut season last year. Kicks up towards half forward, marking contest at Longmire. And I, for one, am amazed that he actually took his place in the side tonight after a shoulder injury which looks, uh, looked pretty serious last week. Carey marks. And the distance obviously won't be a problem. Kicks a goal and gets it. Knights. Oh, bad hand pass. That's Romero in. Good tackle on the ball. Spurs free. Chance for uh, Lees. A quick kick from... Uh, came from Laidley. 
Up towards centre wing, Carey again, cutting them to pieces down there. Over to Allison, a long kick, one-on-one -on -one duel, long mark, little push and a great mark. Great kick. Well, on that occasion, it was the right hand ball from Kerry to set it up there. Allison running past. And Tony Rock's been in the thick of things as well. This will be his fourth kick. Kicks it goal and puts it through. Kick is smothered. Rock, quick hand pass. Archer okay. Crabbe, we're not oh. in position. Not paid by the umpire. Gee, well, we all saw it up here. Blakey, a quick kick. Roberts, marks. So Mark Roberts. No one part doesn't move for that one, it's through. Well, it's at half forward for North, getting uh, towards the centre of the ground. The Schenko went without it. There's Rock shuffling it out. That was good play to Ramiro. Here's Dean Laidley for the half forward line. The bounce very important here. It's tapped away, kicked away. Good by. Here's uh, McAdam. He was pushed in the back off field. He was by Tony Free. So it's a free kick to McAdam. Adrian McAdam. Oh, that's a better looking Gee. kick. That is a beautiful kick. It's a goal. Schwoss goes about a metre, that kick. Again, the kick was by Schwoss to the half forward line. It's a loose ball. Oh, well rode, Jose Ramiro. On to Stevens. Stevens to Longmire. Free kick down the ground. Mark, anyway. Beautiful play in the packs there by North. Now, Longmire, very accurate kick from close in kicks. I think he's gold, all right. Yes. Yashenko gets front position from Schaefer. Neither of the big guys can bring it down. Yashenko, long looping hand pass up towards centre wing. Here's a chance for North again. Pass in towards Longmire. Longmire's kick one after he grabbed that mark from Anthony Stevens. That's going to be close over the top of the post. It's a goal. Roberts has the ball kicked out of his hand. Waitman looking for the free kick. Kick away by John Blakey, who we spoke of just a few moments ago. Bigashenko gets the front position. Back to Romero. Kick from a standing start up towards McAdam. And McAdam doesn't, uh, doesn't let him down. He's had two kicks so far for a goal and a behind. Adrian McAdam. Can he keep his record clean? Score with each kick so far. This is his third kick. Will it be his second goal? It is. So it's throw in in front of that now very crowded southern stand. Certainly the bottom two decks and most of the uh, top deck. Free kick to north. Push, Pete. Here he wants to take it. Schenko, I think, might take it. No, it's going to be Kerry. We weren't uh, too sure. Through captain. Oh! oh, what a kick! It's there! So here comes North again, a handball to Ramiro, they've got the loose man, Anthony Rock breaks the tackle, another hand pass, Stevens, over the top, cleverly, as the kick from Larkin, Matthew Larkin, oh, oh! fly, I think it's a mark, oh, look at that by Longmire. Therefore, yeah, you've got chance to get the ball forward, I thought the kick from Larkin might have gone through. John Longmire, oh, he's hooked it, has he kicked it? Yes. Roberts, underneath it, Knights, Scholl. Stevens, Schwoss from the Morris middle winner, awkward looking kick, in fact a bad kick, McAdam gives away the hand pass, Pyman 25 metres out directly in front and has popped it through for another one. Gale, can't take the mark, Rock on the end of the hand pass at right half forward, he's been busy Rock, McAdam, good mark, 50, 50 metres, that'll be another one, might have kicked it anyway so you'd have to say a silly infringement. Adrian McAdam, 2-1, he's now kicked 3-1. All North Melbourne, and as I think you would say, Pete, loose men everywhere. Yep. Lately, Allison, Roberts, who was very mobile for his side, shepherd by Pyman, long way out from goal, 55 metres, kicks it goal, off the hands of the pack, McAdam goal, he kicks his fourth. This is Pyman, well a little chip shot, I oh, could rattle this, Carey will give it off, and Ramiro, 15 metres out, kicks another one. Turner in front, no mark, hand pass from Pyman, on to Swash. Swash straightens up from 45 metres, swings it back, Wayne Swash for a beautiful goal. Ramiro, turns on a Thrupney bit, gets it back inside 50, Carey, McAdam, can he get another goal? 15 metres out, goes at it, and gets it. 
Set it up for a fantastic last quarter way. Punch away from the pack. Here he is again, McAdam. Adrian McAdam from South Alice Springs. Goes at goal, oh. and he has threaded it right on the siren. Right on the siren. Mashenko. Quick kick coming from John Blakey. Oh, one of those hospital jobs. Robert stands his ground well. Might have got a free kick anyway. This is just what Richmond doesn't need. A goal here be handy for North. Roberts kicks and gets the goal. Anthony Rock, the big punch. Hyman on the Roberts. Now Allison, danger for Richmond. Allison chips it in short. Intelligent play by Brett Allison. I thought he was going to blaze away, but he chipped it into Ramiro. From directly in front, Jose. I think he's goal. Yes. Back to the centre. Two goals to Jose Ramiro. Can North Melbourne get another one? Lately. Oh, beautiful Mark Pyman. McAdam making a lead. He's decided to ignore that. McAdam himself has kicked six. Pyman's kick going close. More than close. It's a goal. He'll bomb this one in long about. Now, will he try and beat the man? No, he won't. He centres the ball. Players swoop from everywhere. Oh, good mark by Mark Roberts. About 30 metres out from goal. Mark Roberts directly in front. Kicks and puts it through. Jose Ramiro from 45 metres. Oh, it's out to the right. That's where he ran. And the pack develops. Oh, good mark, Wayne Carey. Very young captain. Great future from directly in front. And he has goal. Allison, from the winner of the mark of the year here, took the grab on this ground a couple of seasons back. McAdam in front, sticky fingers, and marks. Well, gee, can he get seven? In his first game. What a debut if he kicks seven. Oh, great effort. There's Adrian McAdam for goal number seven from 50 metres. Oh, good kick. A great kick. Goal number seven. What a great debut. Now, Richmond were very keen and enthusiastic. It was a Friday night game. I think there was 40,000 in MCG. There was a real good atmosphere. And uh, um, at the finish, um, we, we, we sort of you know, ran away from him probably in the last 15 minutes of the game and 20 minutes of the game, and it was a, it was a good win for North Melbourne. Not only did the Roos win, Adrian McAdam silenced his doubters with a sensational debut. We knew he could play, um, but he sort of uh, he had an interrupted pre-season. He, he broke his foot and uh, hardly done any uh, pre-season training, but gee, he was on fire that night and uh, it was a special opening and, you know, to kick seven goals and some of them from uh, pretty acute angles. Um, it was quite amazing, actually. Apart from his goal kicking, McAdam quickly became famous for his ability to drop punt a ball into a bin. I look back now and uh, a lot of blokes have tried it since, but I, I look back and, and, and think of myself and Adrian standing in the middle of the ground. He had a football in his hand. I, wasn't even, I was talking to him something about the game or, or I really can't remember now. And he's just casually going back from 35 metres with a, I suppose you'd call a nine iron uh, drop punt, straight in. And a lot of guys have tried it since and got nowhere near it. He's a pretty amazing sort of sportsman, Adrian McAdam. And I'll tell you the story about uh, um, pre-season training. A couple of boys went down to a, a local hotel just for a drink after training pre-season. And uh, it was a Friday night. And um, there's a basketball ring. It's a, it's a hotel in St George's Road, North Fitzroy. There's a basketball ring up there as well. And a couple of guys were having a few uh, shots while they were just sitting around talking, that sort of stuff. And the most any, any North guy got in was, uh, was five. Um, and Adrian was sitting at his, uh, on his chair. He never got up to have a shot. And I was just about to leave. And I think Anthony Rock said, why don't you have a shot, Adrian? So there you go. And um, he threw uh, something like 10 straight in and didn't even hit the ring. And they couldn't believe it. And then Anthony said, well, look, how come you haven't even hit the ring? He said, you want me to hit the ring? So the next nine, he proceeded to, to roll around the ring and go in as well. So he's a pretty amazing sportsman, and, that, and that's a true story. Incredibly, St Kilda passed up the offer for Adrian to join his brother Gilbert at Moorabbin. Now, we took a punt. It wasn't so we picked him our first draft choice. I think he was well up into the hundreds. Um, we got him, and, and to, to Greg Miller's uh, credit, Greg took, went to Adelaide with him and, and, and took one of our players over there who'd played Teal Cup football with Adrian and spent a couple of days and just really wanted to find out you know, how bad he wanted to play for North Melbourne. And look, let's be realistic, it was a punt. But to, to Greg's uh, credit, uh, he made the right choice. And, and, and talking about credit, you know, Adrian deserves a lot of it because he, gee, he put a lot of hard work in. And, you know, 
the, the amount of training he did to get himself right and fit enough to play at this level, um, you know, speaks volumes of his uh, of his efforts, and he, he deserves a hell of a lot of credit for what he's done. Out of a capper by Schwoz, Roberts. Schwoz, well played. Now he's got a chance from here. Goes for it. Bang and puts it through. Impressive early Archer. Oh, well played, McKenna. You give him a chance from here. He's so mercurial. Look at that. Oh. When North belted Sydney by 124 points, some observers remarked it was a sad day for the concept of a National League. Gee, I wasn't thinking uh, anything sorrowful at all that day. I was just thinking uh, how pleased I was. We had, I think we had t t uh, three ten-goal quarters. Uh, Adrian kicked the bag, Johnny Longmire kicked the bag. Um, we played really um, uh, first-class football and uh, f fortunately we really demoralised the Swans that day. But was it like flogging a dead horse? Well, funnily enough, we kicked, I think, 10 goals um, to one or two in the first quarter, 11 goals to one or two in the first quarter. Then the Swans come at us hard a bit, and we, you know, we sort of, we may have even been in scored in the second quarter. Well, it gave me some ammunition at half time. We came out uh, um, in the third quarter, really fired up again, and, and kicked a, a, another 10 goals. And then the last quarter, the, the, even though the Swans probably kicked three or four goals late, or probably after the 20, 25 minute mark of the last quarter, it was just a. Uh, uh, our guys' real sort of enthusiasm, keenness, and and desire to prove people wrong. We just kept going the last quarter, and it was uh, was terrific to uh, be involved in it. Pagan does admit the game wasn't much use as a gauge of the team's performance. It was still hard to get a line through the form at that stage, and you know the Swans without a coach, and they were in uh, well, they were in a sense the men in disarray. Um, so it was really hard to not get that. Well, we wanted to make sure we didn't get carried away with a win like that because. You know, at the end of the day, it wasn't going to help our cause, especially for the next week. Crashing in Hawkins, controls the ball momentarily. Romero gets the hand pass to Rock, towards the pocket, Longmire. Longmire and Campbell. Longmire didn't have the ball. Longmire, 35 metres out. Goal. Archer goes to Fairley. Good hand pass to Rock. North on, off and running here. Kicked by Rock with the breeze. Carey at the back, a big chance. Goal to Carey. Michael Martin out of defence. Straight down the middle. Carey the target there. Works his way into best position and claims a clever mark. Body to body with Sexton and beat him. Rock, well played. He'll, ooh, I thought he might have taken a free. Rock, terrific footy. Romero. Well, this should be a goal, but give five points to Anthony. Rock. North with the breeze. Need this. They lead by six points. Goes down towards half forward. Carey the big leap, got hands to it. Ho oh, ho, down went Rock. It comes to Roberts. 52 metres out, long goal. Bounces off the chest of Longmire, who tracks it out towards his attacking 50. Gets the hand pass back to Clarkson, who pulls it back for Carey. Carey kicking at his second. The lead is 12 points for North. What about the hand pass? He's inside the centre square, kicks it towards half forward. Carey battling with Sexton. Oh, what a mark! What a mark! Unbelievable. Schwoss on the boundary line, centering kick. Mansfield punches. McAdam! What a goal! North looking the better team at the present time. Stevens inside the 50. Campbell body to body with Longmire, Roberts with Dash, McAdam open goal, beckons, he pops it through. Carey outnumbered, comes to Romero, gets the hand pass away, Wild, brilliant play by German to Carey. Carey inside the 50, goes for goal, there's not much breeze, he's made it. Longmire another chance, dishes it back to Allison, off his left boot. McAdam kicks the goal. He's got three. He was involved in that grappling just moments ago, and the umpire quick to pay a free. Lately down towards half for oh. Terry. Oh. One of the marks of the season without question. Grant is there, fisted away by Scholl, who's tightened considerably and doing well now. German, an important link in this term, pulls it back inside the 50. Terry again. What a gutsy mark that was. 
This will make it difficult for the Sprays to get back from here. Carey's kick is true. 10 3 to 5 3. Carey's got four. Back towards the wing. Barely goes back. Over the top, Smith got a fist on it. Liberatore couldn't control it. Stevens has it now. Down towards half forward. Carey battling there with Stanfield. On his knees, Romero shovels it out to Stevens, to Allison, who runs inside the 50. His kicking has been wayward, but not this time. Eight marks to Carey, and we're four minutes from half time. Long kick. Longmire in the goal square. He punches down. Great play. Roberts! Oh, what a goal! Boundary throw, another chance for North. Ashenko clean possession. Longmire in the goal square. Oh. Longmire on his own. <laughs> Carey charges at them. Leaps in the air. Back to Clarkson. Off to Schwoss. Long kick to the goal square. Longmire with the sit. Kicking for number three. Restores the five goal lead. Another chance here for North. Laidley to the back. Schwoss with great endeavour. Rock. High tackle on Schwoss. Free kick right in front. This could be a killer quarter for North. Wind is the target of Schenko over the top. This is Laidley from half forward, pulls it back. Longmire in best position. Came hard at that one. Longmire kicks his fourth. Hurried kick by Smith back towards half forward. Hawkins racing at that one. What a collision, Hawkins and Rock. Hawkins is hurt and he went in search of that collision. Well, look at this. This is virtually developing into a street fight at the present time. Oh. That bobbled it. Here's McAdam. His left footer to 40 metres out, and Archer's marked. It's been only three goals to two this quarter. North with the breeze. And now it's four goals to two. One of the leading kick getters in the competition. Consistency, I suppose, has been the knock against him in past seasons. Not so for the first seven games this year. Long kick, it falls just in short of Shenko. Got to be a chance from here. Ashenko slams it through. Here's Rock. Hard against the boundary line. He hoisted high. Carey wrestling with Stanfield. McAdam didn't have it that time. And it is a free kick. Woods Gray came out and threw everything at North. But North, McAdam gets this with a Pia home. And he's got it. Here's Carey. Should have gone to Romero there. Alex to kick instead towards the kickoff line. In front, McAdam! Clarkson does well to Allison. 35 metres out. Bends one back. Superb effort. High fives all round. And that is Allison's 100th goal in his 100th game. 21 disposals, most of them by hand. McAdam again. Well, he had no right to take that. It's not beyond the realms of possibility for his sixth goal. Looks good. It looks very good. Wine gets a fist to it, but it's a goal. Boy, oh boy. You start your career with seven, ten, and six, and he's still got nine minutes to go. We were very positive about things and we really focused on the positives. Um, and it, that was a very good win out there, you know. Uh, a lot of, lot of good sides have gone out to the Western Oval and fallen over. Um, I thought we were, we were very good that day. He was involved in that grappling just moments ago and the umpire quick to pay a free. Lately down towards half for Terry! Oh. Oh. One of the marks of the season without question. Not everyone thought so. I was quite confident that we, we were... Uh, going to be a good side. A lot of people asked me, you know, what our aims and our goals were, and I said, look, we want to make the six. And I can remember a few commentators sort of, I can remember one interview on a, 
uh, on a radio station uh, where, they, where, where one of the guys, after I'd hung up, I just had the radio still telling me virtually sniggered to say when I said, I think we're aiming to make the six. And I can remember him saying, oh, North Melbourne are going to make the six. There's going to be about ten sides are going to make the six now. And I, I just thought, well, oh, well, I, yeah, actions are going to speak louder than words. From the centre square, lovely drop punt to the goal square. Long my set, smart with a big fly, McAdam. McAdam, round the body, he's very good, this man. Back. A genius. Great havoc for Carey, blocking him up. From 45 metres, and a good-looking kick by Roberts for a goal. my point of view and the players' point of view, it was our real opportunity, a chance for redemption. You know, we'd been belted by 147 points there, ridiculed, humiliated, and we really, uh, we were really prepared for that game. And uh, I still think back now and think it probably at the six-minute mark, we're 29 points up, and Wayne missed a goal, and Adrian McAdam missed one in the last quarter, and so did Mark Roberts, and, you know, we, we probably tried to save the game. We went probably ultra-defensive, and, uh, you know, we, sh we should have just played the sort of football we played during the, during the third quarter. Um, we only had to kick one of those goals. They wouldn't have got us, I don't think, if we had got to 35 points up. But um, they kicked a couple of goals quickly. The crowd really got behind them. And uh, if you thought, the, thought our supporters were uh, deafening at uh, Western Oval, it was sort of um, really heavy at the uh, football park. And the roar from the Adelaide supporters, um, I'm sure, uh, inspired them and helped them. And uh, uh, they ran out, uh, I think, two point uh, winners at the finish. It's always hard to take a narrow defeat on the chin. But this one left a pain deep within the soul of the team. Yeah, it certainly did. We we wanted to uh, we wanted to get back and show the football public that we were a good side and gain the football public's respect. Even though we were defeated by two points, I think we did achieve that. But I, it would have been so much better. And I could, we had to stay in Adelaide that night. We couldn't get a get a flight out because that uh, for whatever reason on the Sunday night, late Sunday, night, all the flights had uh, finished for the day. And I remember laying in the motel room and just you know didn't go to sleep at all. I just wanted to get out of the place and. Uh, uh, it was it was a it was a very funny feeling I can assure you you know um, we should have won the game but uh, what should have been and uh, what actually happened are two different things. Gee, it's pretty hard to get out of a very congested centre rock. An ineffective hand pass. There is a whistle. First free kick of the night. Gee, they worked hard then, didn't they, Don? Ramiro. Great to see him back after a knee reconstruction. Big mark down there, and that's to Longmire. Coming in for his 34th goal of the year, and he gets it. Great start, North. Ball becoming just a little bit slippery in the dew. Hogg, Allison, great intercept. On the rock. Straight down the ground, looking for Longmire. Soldani right there with him. Taps it to McCannum beautifully. Steps up, and he's got it. Wayne Carey, now he's two on two down in the goal square. McCannum on the lead. The long kick by Carey. Longmire. Johnny Longmire, oh, great attempt to mark, not paid. Christo across the face of goal. Oh, oh he's he given it straight ball. to Roberts. Oh, don't tell me Roberts has kicked this. Thank you very much. They're working hard, North Melbourne. Here's Carey back with the flight. Well, it's it. Oh, great play. Magnificent skill by Carey. He suckers it along the ground. Great play by the captain. Back after a new reconstruction, the refrigerator. We call him the Esky now, he's lost quite a bit of weight. Carey again in front of Hannah. It's a dangerous spot for Carlton. Yashenko on his own! Yes, he's got it. No, he's done a Madden, because that's what Madden normally does. The bandage department does a lot of work on him. Kicks all right, it's a goal. Anthony Rock scouting the pack, well done by the little rover. On the left foot, into Carey. Oh, gee, is he playing a game again? Don't know who they're going to put on him. Wayne Carey in towards full forward. The players set themselves. Roberts at the back. Hunched on by. Oh, chance for Roberts. Hannah tried to punch. Roberts a goal. Lately. That's a good kick distance-wise. Levels 55 metres. McAdam gets front posse. He's got backup uh, support from Swass. Gives it away. Hand pass. Carey takes the mark. Here he's kicked 1-1. One, one. Kick number six. And gets his second goal. 
Bailey off the ground. Schwoss, Allison, good turn of speed at right centre wing, puts North back into attack. They need something to spark them into this uh, second quarter. Roberts, oh, they can raffle this. Longmire, 20 metres out directly in front, snaps it goal. That looks pretty good, he's got it. One on one duel, Larkin with Ratton. Larkin gets there first, Carey. Not a good pass, McAdams being quiet. What can he do with this? Makes every kick count, he's made that one count. He's got his second. Danger here, as it comes back to Ratton. Ratton's kick up towards the edge of the square. Oh, great mark to Rock. One, two, three, the juggle. Now Stevens back to Ashenko, so a turnover. Ramiro, who had a great first quarter. Dual North, Carey, Mark, a free kick. Now there was use of the body. Hip and shoulder, there was just hips. Yeah, hips and shoulders into it. Kick number nine. There's a goal. Now, put on the ground by Hannah. Brought back by Ross Smith. Pushing and shoving going on. McAdam. Oh, don't tell me McAdam's kicked this. He has. What a goal. What a goal. Sensational play by Adrian McAdam. Couldn't do Oh, gee, was that high? Lately, did well to ride the bump. German, nearly a fumble. Tommy Elvin hurt himself after that clash with Laidley. Stevens. Stevens at left half forward. Goes for goal. And has kicked the corner. What a ripper. Gets onto the left foot. Brett Allison in towards half forward. Up they go. Longmire. The ball hits the deck. Schwoss trying to weave through the pack. Umpire says too high. Free kick to Schwoss. And Silvani does not like it at all. Getting close to half time. As he runs in Wayne Swass. It's a wobbly kick. It might clear the pack. It's a goal. Fantastic effort. Congratulations to Peter. There's Rock free kick. Holding He's the man. Right in front of the umpire. Mark Roberts for North Melbourne. He's at centre half back on Spalding. So they got a little bit more height up on the forward line. Or back line North Melbourne. Anthony Rock for his first goal of the game. And he puts it right through. Centering kick from him. No mark taken. Schwoss. Will he get clear? Gives it to German. German from 35 metres out. Goes a goal and kicks it. Schwoss. Keeping the ball in front of him. Shuffles it out to Ramiro. Good ball handling skills. Now it's Anthony Stevens bringing it back in front of goal. Longmire. And over the back, Allison. Another goal to North Melbourne. Great play. Came off for well, he limped off at the end of that game. Swass is up and running on the boundary. I think it's uh, it was just a matter of getting some fresh legs onto the ground when he was removed. Wyatt to Larkin. Just came off into change bench replacing Rock Larkin. And three best and fairest as well. And with kicks like that, who could argue? Michael Sexton for the half hour. Look at this uncontested. Mark Roberts and David Parkin would not like that. Here for the forward line now. Mark Roberts. Oh, he's gone for a booming torpedo putt. Look at that for a kick. A magnificent kick, Mark Roberts, for a goal. Oh, what about that? Sexton. That was a good tackle. McAdam off the ground. Oh, oh, gee. That would have been some goal. McKay. Gets taken out of it from behind. Dwyer. Centering kick from him. Mark needed here. None there. It's going to be a free kick. Really see what that was for. Carey's going to take it. Good umpiring again. But Wayne Carey's kicked 3 2, a chance to make it 4 2, and the game really safe for North, which he does. <laughs> Madden and Carey. Oh, look at Carey. Grabbed down by Madden. Oh, free kick. Yes. Had to be a free kick to Carey. He just got rid of the ball before he was grabbed. And he is a very, very cunning. Clever and brilliant player, Wayne Carey. Now, is it a goal? Yes. I think it is, yes. 5-2 to Carey. We were, we were excellent that night. I mean, uh, Carlton said, that, you know, after the game, Carlton said they played pretty well. Um, I think that, that defeat, the 38 points by North Melbourne, did change Carlton's structure around somewhat. Though I think they went in with four tools on the forward line, 
they went for more pace and obviously their pace was exported that night. And um, isn't it amazing? They're, they're in the grand final, first side in the grand final. We defeated them by 38 points and uh, you know the way we were playing in June and July was, was something special and I realised that uh, uh, grand finals aren't played during June and July but it just shows you the capabilities of North Melbourne Football Club. You know, um, at any given time, we can be as good as the opposition, uh, and we really to win by 38 points against Carlton was a was a first class effort. With only four days to recover, was Pagan concerned about his side's ability to play four quarters? Well, we're very positive about it, and I, and I think if if you, if you keep raising negatives, sooner or later someone's going to believe you. We're very positive about it. We trained uh, very lightly during the week after the uh, the disappointment of the Sunday night, and I suppose the hurt and uh, the, 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 the positive nature of uh, things during the week and the way we trained certainly helped us and gee, that game against Carlton we played as, uh, uh, as well as at any time during the year. Rock has it for North, still no score, kick by Rock, one out contest, McAdam free kick. Free kick up the ground I think was it? Yeah well done Drew, yes. The Ruckman go at it, as well as Carey and McCartney, McAdam from 25 metres for goal, has kicked it. Kerry gives it off to Archer. Archer can go to Rock, a little chip pass. Anthony Rock on the right foot brings it in towards full forward. McAdam is at the front and it's fisted away by Gaper. Free, Free kick. kick, too high. Now is this McAdam to take it or is it, yes it is McAdam, he was being held. held it and then it went high after people. McAdam might be able to sneak out to the right here. No, he won't. He's having a direct kick. Oh, that looks good. That looks like a goal. Yes. Well, I thought it was after he'd marked the ball. Out it comes towards German. German back towards the half forward line. Up they go. And it's a good mark by Anthony Dwyer. So Anthony Dwyer kicking for North's third. There's the kick. It is very close. The Collingwood crowd not happy, so it's a goal to North. Carey in towards full forward, McAdam and Gafer. And going back with the fly goes Shepherding, free kick McAdam. Shepherding against Gafer. Now we mentioned behind the play what Gafer has been doing, and the umpire had the courage to pay it, and a 50 metre penalty here. The top of the green step, Against the Collingwood captain. That's so unnecessary, he's been sucked in. And Mick Gafer has also been caught now with that Shepherding. Well, there's the goal. Uh, there's a lot of cross breeze about it, but we certainly have to attack from the broadcast side of the ground. Here's Peter Dacos, a centering kick. Brown, Schwartz, what a mark! Gavin Brown there, his stomach muscles are killing him too. He's gone down, he's his pain. Right out to centre wing. Ashinko at the front. Quick kick was by German towards centre wing. McGuan, coming at him was Carey. Oh, he down goes Mick McGuan. Strong hip and shoulder. Like Morewood at the back goes for the fist away. Taken by Anthony Dwyer. Carey versus Carey and McEwen. It's a loose ball. McAdam for goal number four. He can race into the open goal, Adrian McAdam, and he taps it through for his fourth. Well, here's Ramiro on the right foot. Hooks it to the pocket. Mark Roberts back with the flight. He's taken a great mark. Well, Mark Roberts kicked the 75 metre goal against Carlton at the MCG last Friday night. This time he's 25 metres out. Morewood on the mark as Roberts kicks. And Mark Roberts' goal. Comes back to Rock. He goes off the ground. McEwen's got it on the logo. Oh, fantastic smother by Schwartz. Oh, the whistle's been put away. Roberts goes for a bounce. Mark Roberts racing through the centre of the ground. He should be bringing in long. He is. Francisco, oh, they're going to spoil each other. They've done it again. Larkin going back in after it. Larkin, McAdam. McAdam on the left foot. Now on the right. Now on the right hand. Carey from 30 metres straightens up. And Wayne Carey says, thank you very much. I'll have a goal. Underrated player, Drew. High ball, Schwoss. Inside centre half forward. Carey. Yes! Oh. And his second for this quarter. Should get it right in front, 40 metres out. Goal. Rocker again, the big fly. Can't take this one, but he's got it on the ground. He's caught, though. Good tackling by Rock. Here's Gavin Brown. Caught. Oh, that's holding the ball. It's got to be. And the umpire says it is. And again, the ability of the North Melbourne players to tackle, Ross. Shipping across was Jose Ramiro. Ramiro, nice kick to the half-forward line. The big guns set themselves for this. Longmire! 
45 metres. There's the drop putt. It holds up in the breeze. And now it goes sailing over the line for goal. Ashenko. Oh, there's a good mark. Not paid. Oh, I thought there was a mark to Brown. Kicked by Swass. Back to half forward. Oh, Carey's trapped it. On it goes to Allison. Brett Allison from 40 metres. Chips it in. Another goal to North Melbourne. Not easy to come back after you haven't got your full fitness. Great mark by Martin. Terrific mark, and that will really please the North supporters. He used to be a forward in the lower grades. I think he loved that he one. He was. He was a full forward. Here's a Carey. Look at that mark. What a champion's mark, and he's hurt. A great mark in the chest. Two uh, Collingwood players coming in. Here's good stuff. Carey to the pocket. Oh, this is danger because Roberts and McAdam are there. Obviously a good call, too, from McAdam because Roberts could have gone back to take that. A long run in. 40 metres, McAdam, it's swinging back. This could be a goal. It is. It's thumped away. Tony Shaw is there. Oh, he's harassed from all angles. Anthony Rock can give it to Swash. Swash can give it to Carey. He sees him too. Carey from the side. Up he goes. Over the back, McAdam. Goal number six, Adrian McAdam. No mark. McAdam going for goal number seven. He's got it. Centering ball to German. Once he took the mark, he was heading for goal. And Longmire's there to mark. Now he'll run out to the right for sure. I back him in to run out and hook this and snap this one. He's kicked just one goal so far today. Make it two. What will he do? He's going to have a shot. No, he's not. He gives it back to Clarkson. Clarkson Good in kick. the wall. Oh, look at that kick to Mark Roberts. That is magnificent play, North Melbourne. This is Mark Roberts. Kicking for his second of the game. You have to kick left to right, or oh, it's a wobbly kick. Will it clear the pack? It does. It's a goal. Rock steers the pass to Longmire. No mark. At the back, Carey. Here's a goal. Here's that man, McAdam. He's kicked seven. Oh, he's got it again. He's kicked eight. Allows Mark Roberts to come away with it on the left foot. McAdam! Oh, how can you stop this man? He's kicked eight, he's kicking for his ninth. Well, he's been outstanding again. Adrian McAdam directly in front for goal number nine. He stabs. That's it, right through the middle. A sensational performance again. go to Victoria Park and you know it's been the, uh, uh, the burial ground for many teams that I'd played in. Uh, we knew it was a real test, it was a packed house at uh, Victoria Park and uh, you know it was a great, I think we won by 83 points and it was a, uh, a super win for us and uh, I'd been involved in football as a player and as a coach but yeah, that, was, that was probably the best home and away win that I've ever been involved in and to go to Victoria Park and see the Collingwood Hordes walking out you know five minutes into the last quarters and the North Melbourne supporters uh, jubilant and cheering and yelling right to the last siren it was, uh, it was really something special and it'll live in my memory for a long while. Again Adrian McAdam had a day out. I did have a day out, um, he was really on fire, you know, he, everything he touched on the goal he was, he was kicking them from behind the green skin sort of thing and uh, he was great that day at Victoria Park and he was under a lot of pressure because the, uh, um, you know, he, he, he started to make a name for himself and to go to Victoria, Victoria Park and it was a huge test for him and he came through with flying colours. We went up to Canberra, um, I think we had the bye and then the state game was on so we missed we, two weeks off. So we went up to Canberra and played against a representative side, took a couple of young kids up there, it was a night game under very poor lighting. and. Uh, uh, we kept our fingers crossed that there were no injuries and luckily enough there wasn't. It was a, a very good exercise because I think you know, to go two weeks without a game could have put it as a disadvantage. You know, you have a trip with the, with the buy and it, it builds on morale and team spirit and you, know, you, you get used to travelling and uh, there were games, I think we, we played West Coast, I think looking back and we, we wanted to try and simulate that as much as we possibly can and realise that a trip to Canberra is not like a trip to, to Perth but you had to, your routine was broken, you had to get into a plane, you had to, you know, you, you had to fly back sort of thing so it was a, uh, we tried to simulate what was coming up the next game. At the halfway point of the season, what were Pagan's aims? Our aim at that stage was to make the six. I think we're, we're on top of the ladder at that stage. 
Um, you know, I wouldn't want to be talking about premierships or grand finals because it's, it's, it's amazing. You can't win one until you're in a grand final, so, you know, why talk about it? Our aim was still to make the six. Our aim was just to, to, to focus on the, uh, the immediate challenges and what was coming up. We had some huge hurdles in front of us, so we really wanted to focus about uh, the West Coast Eagles, which was the next game we had to uh, um, play. Yashenko reaches over the top and gets it down. Worked forward, the high kick from German down towards half forward. Runs free behind Waterman, the first back. Oh, oh well done, McAdam. Goal coming up. McAdam runs in and kicks it from 15 metres. A high one down towards centre half forward. Carey in from the side. That's a mark. Wayne Carey, the skipper. His best goal tally this season. Seven against Melbourne in round four. It's close. It's good. Just it away by Warsfold. Schwass, hacked out of midair, Jakovic. Schwass does well. He's got the ball forward at the centre line. Ooh. Goes long back towards full forward. Archer in from the side. Always his ball. North looking better now. Archer sneaks it through. McAdam in close attendance there. There's well, Brennan. Actually, it was McAdam who, I think, initiated that action and accidentally Brennan got him. The mark has been taken down the ground in the pocket by Longmire, so plenty happening here at the WACA ground, and the crowd still hostile over that last decision. McAdam seems to be okay. John Longmire. North getting back into this, and that's a magnificent kick. Pike, first to arrive. We're looking for Matera, chopped out there by Stevens. Around the outer side he goes, and that's a good long kick. Carey was held. Oh, Matt no. is not. That was a strong mark in front. Doing it well, isn't he, Carey? That'll be a feature tonight. Jakovic and Carey, centering kick, coming out Longmire. He's got this ball right on the 50. It'll take a good kick from here. Kicking at his second. The lead currently is 13 points. That's a marvellous kick, straight through the middle. Ramiro who's also on that 50-metre line to McAdam, who's caught by Matera, but gets the handball to Stevens. Centering kick to the goal square. Roberts at the back, good lead, good grab. It's a lovely kick, by the way. 24 goals so far in 10 matches. Make that 25 in 11 so far. It's the cross to Schwass again. Schwass forward of the centre, runs to just outside the 50. Long kick down towards the kickoff line, Ashenko and or Archer. Archer's mark. Gutsy mark that one. So Archer, he's been all over the ground tonight. Kicking at his second. That's close. It's a goal. It's his second goal, Archer. Crashing it out there is Rock. On his knees is Lamb. Only as far as Ramiro towards half forward and Carey slides in. Plays on nicely oh. to Allison. Goal coming up. Archer runs the 40, measures it, and puts it through. Ooh. He's got three. Blakey has had a pretty good turn. Sweeps the handball. North Melbourne's play has been outstanding and stirring. Stevens has kicked towards Carey again. He's right on top of Jakovic at the moment. The battle of the Tyros. Carey's kicked the full forward. McAdam waits. Long by McAdam a stretch. Roberts over the top. Another one. Jakovic under great pressure. Larkin, who's normally a good kick, got run down, though. Couldn't quite get it away. Free kick to Archer. McAdam, Carey, Longmire and Roberts have been their principal goal kickers all year. They've all got on the board again tonight, and suddenly Archer's come through from nowhere. Normally their defender, and he's now kicked four goals. No contest right on the kickoff oh. line. No contest. There's that man again. Archer. Archer. Gets the goal. Still in play, Hampson, North Melbourne. Allison's handball, very good to Ashenko, who also did a great job. He's kicked the centre half off Carey. In the right place at the right time. He's kicking from about 40 metres out. And uh, that's another one. Charged down by McKenna. Laidley didn't have it. He played for that, actually, Laidley. He'll get the free. And a couple of firebrands there, Laidley and Langdon. And Rock just simmering alongside. And now 50 metres for Dean Laidley. It'll carry him down to very close <laughs> to the 50. <laughs> Had a word to Langdon as he went by too. What can he do? Not a bad effort. Certainly got the distance. 
It's a goal. Now German can go. German runs to the wing, kicks long inside the 50. White's Great in kick. front. Longmire reaches over the top. Carey gets it to Allison. Open goal. Allison kicks it. Fisted away by McKenna. Oh, lucky break for North Melbourne. Here's a chance. Round the body. Allison, another goal. His second. Clarkson wasting no time. Centering kick. Worked under the ball as Archer. Almost the mark to White. Trying to crash his way through Carey. Back to goal. Lays it off to Allison. Wants his left side. Gets rid of Carey. Back it comes to Carey. He's right on the 50. He hooks it down towards the kickoff line. Going back. Britain got a fist to it or did he? Oh. No, he did not. Not according to the umpire. Carey's kicked a long range goal. Players were great over there. It was a real exciting game, and uh, um, you know it is an unorthodox uh, preparation, and it did, did break your routine having to go across there. Um, we were held up by the, the plane flight going over on the Thursday afternoon. We were supposed to train at the Claremont Oval at uh, uh, five o'clock. We never got there till quarter past six. Um, you know we had a light session under lights. Um, the players were really professional and, and handled every little hiccup and hurdle that got in their road. We went back to the motel, had a, had a, uh, uh, a team meeting, had to talk about a few things, had a good night's sleep. We went down to the whacker the next morning and just walked around the oval, had a bit of a feel of the place, went back and uh, uh, prepared ourselves for the game and uh, gee, yeah, the North Melbourne players were great that night. Despite the fantastic win, Dennis Pagan was certain the ruse could still improve. Well, I think we could have, we, we could play better, and I still believed it at that stage. Um, uh, you know, there were there were there were a few guys down that night. Um, we had players out with injuries who came back into the side. Um, I think Darren Crocker pulled out with the flu um, during the week, um, so we knew we we knew we could probably get a bit better. No one at home, however. The mark taken by Craig Scholl. Swings north into attack. They're kicking to the right of screen. High up towards the half forward line. Here's the man they've got to stop. He's Wayne a great Carey, player, Sandy, isn't he? Terrific player. Will these conditions suit him tonight? 40 metres directly in front. He sets North Melbourne alight in the opening minute. Chopped off by Anthony Rock. Went for the torpedo punt kick, and fortuitously, it lands with Carey. You've got to have that guy there that gives you confidence to kick it up there, and this man at least holds it in if he doesn't grab it. Shoots for goal and gets it. Socket off the ground by Allen. He's looking to get it into the middle. Blakey is there, and he'll probably get a free kick. John Blakey was a fantastic player, I reckon, Sandy, for Fitzroy, and he's got to be a great acquisition for North. Stevens kicks up towards full forward. Oh! oh! You can't keep him out of it. To level the scores. Early in the second quarter, McAdam. Most exciting player has done exactly that. Kipped in was Carey, bashes it into the centre of the ground, Rock overruns it, but beautifully handled by Fairley. Back to Rock, up towards full forward, he's got it again. There's a goal to North. <laughs> and the real advantage there of moving the football down the ground very, very quickly. Scholl to half forward. Oh, here's a chance, a snap in towards goal by Brett Allison. Yes! Well, he's going short here. Come off. He certainly controlled it. The Hawthorne player arriving just a split second too late, and usually they are paid. Young man from Caniva. Shoots for goal, straight through the middle. Big Alex goes for it with Stephen Lawrence. Stephen's into the action. Pritchard under Oops. pressure. Oh, Carey! He's got it! Three goals! At half back. Now into the centre, and Blakey takes a ripper. On he goes to his captain, 70 metres out. Now what will McAdam do here? Ho, ho, ho! He's going to pay it. Oh, oh. German out of the middle, gets caught, but he does get a kick away. Down towards half forward, down towards Carey and Romero. Hawks have the numbers. Romero has the desperation. Up towards full forward. McAdam, yes! Somehow got to the front. This to regain the lead. Oh, what a final quarter it's going to be. Directly in front, 40 metres out. He makes no mistake. North are back in front. Tim Allen. 
German. Tim Allen gets his left foot to it, but it goes back as far as Ross Smith. His kick will be marked by Anthony Dwyer. He's a chance. He's going to kick it into the square. North Melbourne will take a mark, and it's the captain. And you'd mention it, Jared. He's got to do something, and here it is. And his fourth goal will make just one kick in it. He kicks it. North throwing down the challenge. Platten can't get it out of the middle. Neither can Ashenko. Stevens can. A high kick. North down towards Roberts. 40 metres out. They know only one way, and that's forward. Roberts to regain the lead. I think he has. Chance here. Oh, Anthony Dwyer. Clean bowl. Archer a little kick. Condon goes after it. Oops. Handball. Oh, oh, oh great ball. Bang. Anthony Rock into the action again. Yes, when it was so critical. He kicks it long. Back towards half for Roberts. Coming into the play. Play on Rock. B.O.G. Anthony Rock. Sit down for the captain. Oh, captain Gary. 50 metres from home. Jenky to the outer side. German high. Still on the 50 metre line. In fact, inside. Oh! The captain again! Sandy, since Jared mentioned it, he's taken three absolutely marks. unbelievable marks. This could be the match winner. Not too far from home to say that. This for number five. Gonna be close. I think he's got it! Five to carry! We played very well that night, and it could have gone either, either way. We made a couple, a couple of basic uh, mistakes. We perhaps didn't man up, uh, you know, close enough um, or tight enough in the dying moments. And uh, Johnny Platten picked the ball up and kicked it to Jason Dunstall. He marked on his chest and kicked the goal. Um, you know, unfortunately, you know, Michael Martin and Wayne Swasser reported in the in the game against the West Coast Eagles. We went out with our two of our better players, which did unbalance us somewhat, and we had to play John Longmire, take him away from goals, and put him on Jason Dunstall, and I thought they had a terrific battle. I think Jason kicked six goals. Johnny played a fine game also, but and I suppose looking back in retrospect, that were the reasons why um, you know just became unbalanced. Uh, we, we didn't have our right structure in. We still could have won the game. Um, we made a couple of blues, but it wasn't to be, and uh, Hawthorne won on the night. Was he disappointed that Jason Dunstall was given a second chance to kick the winning goal seconds after he missed a set shot? Yeah, it was at this time because I think you know if we had a if we had a been more defensive and had to push the ball out out, out of uh, 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 you know out of bounds again, it wouldn't have happened. I knew as soon as uh, Platten got it that Dunstall was going to mark it, and as soon as he marked it, I knew he was going to kick it. He was too good a player to miss two from virtually the same spot, and uh, that's exactly what happened. So did he rant and rave in the dressing rooms afterwards? I suppose all coaches rant and rave at some stage. Um, no, I was just disappointed for the players. Um, we've thrown a real good opportunity to really cement ourselves, and you know we we should have finished on top of the ladder. There's no doubt about that, and we had ample opportunities to do it. At the end of the day, we weren't good enough, and uh, the Hawthorne game and, and several others to come did cost us uh, the number one position at the at the end of uh, round uh, 22. Probably our, at that stage, probably our worst performance for the year. You know, we're halfway through the third quarter, we were some 33 or 34 points up. It was played in pretty murky and wet and uh, uh, dirty uh, conditions out at Fitzroy. Um, we had ample opportunities. We mucked it up, and I can I can remember saying at the end of the game to the players that this this defeat, one point defeat, is going to haunt us at the end of the year. And, and it's amazingly so. It, it exactly did, and I suppose that one point lost more than anything else um, where we should have won it. Um, it cost us top spot on the ladder. Did he really believe that? Yeah, I did at that time because I, I just thought that you know we'd been down for such a long while and we'd been so good and maybe even I, as coach I should take some of the responsibility because you know I was, I was still 
at that stage, you know, we did a lot of good things and we could have won the game. And I suppose after the Hawthorne game, which was a real thriller, and we did play well and we did lose it. And, you know, we were, we were very positive about things and very encouraging that maybe a, a few of the players and maybe the people around the place, you know, thought, well, gee, close enough is good enough. We played super games. We're on top of the ladder. Um, I just thought that mentality may have been creeping into the place. And I certainly wanted to put a stop to it if it was. Umpire calling play on. And good umpire in this long mire. Gets it out to Scholl. Back it comes to German. Now Swass. Swass on the left foot can kick a goal. 45 metres, Wayne Swass brings it in. Still a chance, Roberts on the left foot. Mark Roberts, a goal. Good start to North. Out of the centre, Clocker's left foot towards Carey. Fletcher did very well, Carey's recovery was excellent. McAdam, well, this is one man you give a very good chance to from anywhere. Straight through. Centre in kick. Roberts a target here. Punched away with courage by Thompson. Good tackle on German. Play on call. Now Larkin is a good finisher normally. The drop by McAdam. Stretches, takes it. It's paid. Eight. He kicked poorly a couple of weeks ago, Bruce. He kicked three Here goes. Here we go. Denham was here. Now Bomber Thompson. Mark Thompson. Smothered off his boot by Swass. Still a chance for Rock. Up in the air, forward pocket, a chance for North Melbourne here. Longmire read it better than Fletcher. Now surely all the players tonight would be wearing long stops. You would hope they would be, especially with the amount of rain that we've had in Melbourne this week. But the slip there, critical because uh, Essendon lost possession. Here's the kick from Longmire. It looks good. It looks very good. He's kicked it. Back to the centre square. Salmon caught under it. Allison read it beautifully. Sweeps it superbly to Schwass away. Lean left footer to the 40 metre line. Oh, Longmire. Surely, here's another one. Go for it, Johnny, and kick it. Harvey did well against Carey. Handball by Larkin. Rock spun around, got caught high. Surely, yes, free kick. It's got Longmire and McKenna in the goal square. Longmire provides the first lead. Goes to Carey in the box seat. Good mark. It's a very good North Melbourne side. Carey from 35 metres, tucked away, drop punt, good kick. On to Larkin. Larkin's going to have a shot at goal. He kicks it in long. Longmire and Fletcher. Fletcher tries to punch it. If this drops short, it'll be a goal. Here's a chance. Longmire on the left foot. Oh, don't tell me he's kicked that. That is a great goal. Yes. Well, that was a magnificent effort by Dustin Fletcher. Carey looking for a free kick. He'll get it. Harvey upset. Well, I suppose technically it was there, Bruce. Technically it was there, but really, it's a very soft free kick, this point. Wow. He's kicked one tonight, Kerry. 30 metres out. Squeezes it in. Somerville versus Martin. Michael Martin again does well. Simons. Martin. Well played. This is a ball to be won now. Allison off the ground. Clever. It was a good option. Crocker's got two North Melbourne players in front of him. Rocket half back. Torpedo punt doesn't quite get it. Kick it's in the centre. Oh, oh right, Mark Gray, man over the back. Now McAdam was on his own in the goal square for a minute. Look at him. He must fancy his chances here, Peter, as Bradley Payne comes off for the Bombers to be replaced by Calthorpe. Man's high kick will get to the square. Fletcher in the front spot. McAdam off the ground goal. McAdam's got another one. Long the target. Swash has got the ride and takes the mark. Wasn't a good kick from Buick in the end, Bruce. No, it was very poor. Michael Long was calling for him to go long with the uh, with the kick. And then he just sat it up over the top of Michael Long. Gave uh, Wayne Schwass the perfect run at the ball. Carey came in at the back. Long way out, but he can thump one, Carey. Just like that. Have a oh. little goal. Wonderful. Too. This could cost them a goal, this. Crockett. A big play coming up. Fletcher to try and spoil. Let's see if Danaher can make amends. Ramiro, 20 seconds remaining. Allison. Well, you're right, Peter, weren't you? That kick. Siren's gone. Left foot by Allison. It's a goal. It's a goal. What a crushing blow that could be. Oh, handball. Longmire. 
Ramiro. Free kick, Ramiro. Directly in front, a pressure kick. They need it, North Melbourne. About four men on the mark. But Ramiro slams it through for a goal. Free kick to North. We'll go to Wayne Carey, and I just get a feeling about North now, Bruce. Carey to Longmire. Lifting again, as we know he is capable of. And Longmire from just inside the 50. To put North in front. He's done it. A vital ball. Mark Roberts did it well. Oh, Mark Roberts playing a blinder now. On the McAdam. McAdam on the left foot. Wins it in towards goal. The high flyers are there. Oh, Mark Longmire. He looks like he's going the banana kick. There it is. Oh, I think he's kicked it. Yes. North in front. North Melbourne have come back quite magnificently. Schwarzer's long one. Carey. Again, telling Mark, showing his championship quality, showing his there. class. Yep, a real match winner. Kick from about uh, 48 metres, drop punt. That's better. Lose the pack. Wait, Schwoss. Get. They're off and running. Schwoss will look for Carey again. Here they come. Longmire, McAdam, Adrian McAdam. He's kicked a great goal. I think North might be home. This is the ball game. If he goals, go short. Oh, McAdam. look at that. Derry Kickett was caught asleep. McAdam, North Melbourne will still be top tonight. Top of the table, the Kangaroos. As McAdam chips it away and puts it through. Now Stevens. Now Blakey. Blakey sends it to that forward line again. At the back is Johnny Longmire. He's marked. Longmire is marked again. And Johnny Longmire for goal number six. He stabs it right through the middle. Here's Brett Allison. Chipping it in short. And there's McAdam. Adrian McAdam for goal number six. There's the kick. Oh, I think he's put it through. He's happy. Yes. Strange when you've sort of you've been involved at a club like Essendon, uh, knew a lot about their players. Um, you know there was probably a little bit of psychological warfare, sort of beat up by the press before the Essendon game with, with Kevin and myself. Um, really, it was a lot of rubbish. Um, we went out there, and it was a, you know the, I think the media described it as a blockbuster. Well, gee, it was a it was an amazing feeling. There was probably I don't know 60 or 70, 65,000 there that night, and uh, you know we got off to a flying start and kicked six or seven goals in the first quarter, or five or six. Then Essendon came a bit and were a couple of goals in front at, uh, at uh, quarter time. Essendon played great football through the second and third quarters. We didn't drop our workload, but we just kept working hard and we were at them all the time. And they, they, they missed a lot of uh, goals they should have uh, converted. And I think it was due to our pressure. And 11 points up at three quarter time. And I certainly believe we were still in it. And I can remember uh, Wayne Carey standing directly in front of me. and. Uh, sort of saying to Wayne, gee, gee Wayne, we need something special from you and he just sort of nodded in acceptance and went out and played that uh, amazing last quarter and then Mark Roberts was like a ramp, ramp, rampaging uh, bull running down the, through the midfield and uh, you know it was, it was really exhilarating to watch and I suppose that was as good as any win for the year. I think we kicked 8-8 eight, eight in the last quarter to one goal by Essendon and it was uh, very exciting and we ran away again defeated the, one of the grand finals by 38 points. For Adrian McAdam, it was a chance to play against the side known for its pro-Aboriginal recruiting policy. Well, he played on Derek Kickett that night, and I thought probably Derek had the better of him, and uh, he was causing us problems. Adrian got away in the last quarter and, uh, and kicked three or four goals, and I suppose at the end of the night you, you thought to yourself, Adrian's had a, 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 an ordinary sort of game, and you look, he got six goals next to him, so how can anyone have an ordinary game and kick six goals? Um, his last quarter was very good, though. It was, it was very touching to see Adrian McAdam and Derek Kicker walk off with uh, you know, their arms around each other's shoulders. It was, uh, it was a unique uh, experience to see that. However, the hero of the Essendon victory was none other than Captain Wayne Carey, who responded to Pagan's version of a general pattern story. Yeah, I think it, was something, it goes something on the lines of all my life, I wanted to lead desperate men into a desperate situation. And I can remember sort of uh, thinking of it and talking to a guy about it, a journalist about it, 
And I thought, yeah, that, that's that's an appropriate line at the, at, at the time of the day. And uh, I can remember saying that to Wayne before he went out in the ground. And, uh, you know, it, it was a desperate situation. We wanted to beat Essendon. And, uh, gee, I, and again, I can't I can't think of enough words to say about uh, Wayne Carey's performance that night or, or for the year, for that matter. Um, I would have liked to have played better. With, it started off in fine style. You know, Wayne Carey was on fire, so was John Longmire. Um, it was a funny sort of day. We'd sort of had to stay in Brisbane, uh, not a football city, nothing about football in the, in the papers, um, virtually isolated. Go to the ground and find the grass, I suppose, four and a half, five inches long. <laughs> I don't know why. I suspect there was uh, some fun and games going on with it. Obviously, someone had tried to simulate uh, heavy uh, Melbourne grounds or, or something or stop the ball running for our talented players. Uh, we started off in uh, fine style and looked like we were in for a, a great day. And all of a sudden, I suppose, Wayne Carey hurt his back. Uh, Adrian McAdam got hurt. Anthony Rock did, he, uh, did, a, did his leg. Um, Jose Ramiro uh, also hurt himself. You know, at three-quarter time, we were walking out at three-quarter time, we are still probably five or six goals in front. There were four players being carried to the three-quarter time uh, uh, huddle. Uh, by trainers. I thought, oh gee, what's going on here? We're very positive about it and fortunately enough um, we got 18 guys on the ground and Wayne, to his credit, even though his, his back was uh, very sore, wanted to come on and stood in the stood in the goal square for us and yeah, we ended up winning by, uh, by seven goals and uh, it was a good effort uh, to win by seven goals in Brisbane um, with, the, with the number of hiccups and hurdles we had to uh, overcome that day. This is Taylor. He's forward of the wing, probing kick back inside the 50. Here comes Foe, great mark down there, Archer. German's kick from Mashenko's tap. Well, it's a strong mark taken by Crocker. Too far out to score from there. Centres the kick, McCadden the target. Oh, great grab! The three or four yards that McCadden gave McCadden was just that little bit too much. McCadden and McCadden, what a show. Well, he we missed from point blank range earlier. Should he get this one? Wait on the goal umpire. He's got it. Went back on Hollow and claimed it on his chest. He sets it up for McAdam. One hand. He touched the ball, couldn't control it. Now he's down. Slow to get up is Adrian McAdam. Gilbert's got it. Adrian's got him. Meantime, there's a whistle, and Longmire, I think, will get a free kick about 35 metres out. Of course, coming off eight last week, last Sunday, at the Gabber against the Bears. This time, is it straight? Yes, it is. His knees now as Aitken dragged off it. Winmar gets the hand pass off. This is McCannum again. So good at the back at the present time. Showed a bit of the ball though. As a result, it falls to Dwyer. It was intended, I think, for Burke coming out. Now it's taken by Clarkson to Craig Scholl right on the 50. High kick down towards the kickoff line. Shanahan went back. Crocker a half chance in front. Throws it on the boot goal. Adrian just with the one goal. He's kicked one goal two. McAdam to the outer side. Oh, Everett took off the four nominations and gives away the free kick. The advantage rule was paid. Everett was asking the question. Kick back to Longmire, who takes the mark right next to the goalpost. He should be oh. going further round. I, th I would have thought, yeah. Right on the He's boundary. gripping a bit more and gets the goal. Kernan up in front. Man got a hand to it. McKernan sockers it off the ground. Here's Harvey again. Grim determination as he breaks away. Kicks inside the 50, but not a good kick. And a courageous mark is taken down there by Blakey. Plays on immediately. This is Ross Smith. Haven't seen a lot of him tonight. I've got the numbers out here now, North. Going back, McKernan made it a bit awkward there. Eventually it comes to Roberts. Roberts a sweeping hand pass. Schwass confronted. Gets by Pekin, though. 55 metres out. Long kick, long mile, lets it go, it's a goal. That could be a lifter. Ball play on, Kurt. It was called play on, that was an interesting one. Schwoss. Again north with the numbers and McAdam. Adrian McAdam this time. Takes the mark. Should be able to go from there. He's only about 25 metres out and the angle not really a problem. So for his second. And he gets it. Crocker, terrific work against Hollow. Body to body. And took the mark low down. Still inside the centre square. Goes long. Looking for Longmire, who was held and must get a free kick. 
fullback job to Shanahan. Boy, that was a shocker. Longmire puts it through. Sort of get the impression that they'd like the siren to go for three quarter time to give them a chance to regroup because North Melbourne in the last few minutes have been doing all the attacking. That should be a mark to McAdam. The way he's been kicking tonight, you'd have to say too far out. So Adrian McAdam for his third goal. 57 so far this year. Oh. Got underneath it a little bit, but it's got plenty on it. Beauty! Who's he got out there? Everett. Oh. Peckett. Well, they made a bit of a meal of that one. And the man comes away with the football. McAdam's got it now. So that could be a very costly turnover, Jared. Only 11 matches. Not a bad strike rate. Shouldn't miss and doesn't. Four goals, two he's kicked. No one's going anywhere. Finally, it was Stevens. A quick kick out in front. Longmire! That could be 50. This will be a valuable goal. Put them right back in it. He's got the goal. Four goals to John Longmire. Going to be a Shenko. A little bit of time on the bench tonight, so he should be reasonably fresh. Snapshot. Is a goal by Stevens. North 11 10. There's the kick in. Big pack. Dwyer forced to go again. He'll sleep well. This is German. German awards half forward. In front is Shanahan. From behind Longmire. Open goal beckons. He kicks from 40. It looks good. It's home. His fifth. There's the kick from Shaw. Oh, Stewie Lowe. Almost the mark. He was a bit stiff. Away comes Martin. Sends it back high towards the wing. Back oh. goes Adrian McAdam and made something out of nothing. Well, that one will be brought up at the Christmas table. McAdam forward of the wing. Shakes his brother off. Kicks inside the 50. Longmire. Longmire with other ideas. This has to be a goal. That's a marvellous kick. Magnificent kick. It's home. Over the head of that same player. Longmire will give it back. Kick taken by Bartley. Out in front of goal. Marking contest there. McAdam. Shacks it off the top of the pack and puts it through. You know, we're very disappointed. Um, you know, not to have our good players in. Um, we, did, we didn't play well, but I suppose, you know, even late in the game we had a chance to win it. And uh, um, at the time, I thought, well, gee, you know, we, we hadn't been brained by anybody. Things were, uh, it, it wasn't that bad. And, uh, you know, sure, we were disappointed. Um, but maybe even at that stage, and I suppose it's easy in retrospect now, to look back and say, well, we're, we're a few of us around the club, um, uh, players, uh, staff, uh, uh, supporters, thinking about finals. Because it had been a super uh, year, and I suppose we all knew we were going to be in the finals. And, Maybe we did put the cart in front of the horse and maybe a few people were thinking about finals. It was after this game people started saying, no Kerry, no North. Yeah, exactly. I remember that clearly. I, I had that many phone calls and people talking about it. I didn't believe so. Um, I thought we had a good balance of players throughout the uh, uh, team. And sure, any side would miss uh, one of their star players and a player who'd played so well. You know, if you took Jason Dunstall out of uh, Hawthorne, their uh, um, input would suffer. And the same with, St with Stephen Cunningham or Carlton or, or whatever the case may be. Support from Smith. Back to centre wing. McAdam playing up the ground. Here he is. Oh, clever little kick to Stevens. Kick by Stevens. Longmire one out. Top mark. It was a good mark because O'Reilly is also very strong in the body. Did well last week, O'Reilly, against Rocker for Collingwood. Good shepherd there by McGrath. Bought some time for Bewes. Close to the boundary line. The hand pass all directed, though. It comes to German, who boots it back inside the 50. Longmire in front. Good grab. Or is it Crocker? Crocker. It's Crocker who's taken the mark. North going at their first goal. Two minutes into the second term. And the Crocker kick is good. Away comes Stevens. He's got other ideas. North, one of their rare sorties forward. Up goes Ashenko. Did well to find the ball on the ground. Tries to snap. Not particularly effective. It goes very high in the air. O'Reilly came to meet it. Crocker snaps. And the ball pitches back. It's still not gone across the line. Well, how about that? Oh, Roberts, a mighty kick. 
Longmire. Yes, he held it. But in the last few weeks, really gained confidence. John Longmire. Oh, great goal. Very nonchalant. Goes to Schwoss. He bursts away. The kick inside 50. Oh. No, free kick, not a mark. Free kick to Longmire. Longmire for his second. Gets it. And pull over the top to the 50. Stone and paddles inboard, but it's grabbed by Blakey. Blakey beats one, beats two. Thumps it back towards centre wing. Archer, calmed down by Steve Hocking. Roberts has been one of those who has been a good player earlier, but not so much today. Archer played well. Laidley off to Roberts. Coming up for his 11th disposal, Mark Roberts. On the bounce, Pyman from wide out. Good effort. A goal. Crowd happy, and they've seen Gary Ablett kick his 100. Did it in the first 10 minutes of the game. He's only added two since then. He's on 102. Here's Crocker. Back to full forward. Ashenko front position. No mark. Allison goes back to Schwoss. 35 metres out. Good kick by Wayne Schwoss. A goal. That's holding the ball. Free kick to North. Rowan Saw's in charge of proceedings. The rat, Andrew Buse, gives it to Brett Allison. Allison gets the goal. But Roberts gets back this time on Poole and takes the mark. Centering kick. Longmire, well up the ground. Goes for a bit of a run, shrugs off a tackle. Goes for a 52-metre goal and has kicked it. Very nonchalant. Blake is in the road. Plays on immediately. Schwoss has been lively. Quite a few possessions. He boots it down towards half forward, and that is a better kick. O'Reilly comes up in front of Longmire. Ball spills to Roberts. Bacon, goal square. How will it bounce? In fact, it carries the line. Goal. He's done well, Mark Roberts, a big fellow in the last quarter. German couldn't control it, hasn't knocked away. Hocking did well in a tight situation. Scott, the bouncing ball eventually evaded him. Taken by Buckley. Ashenko goes back with great courage and takes the mark. Alex Ashenko to Schwoss. Storms through the middle. His 29th possession, probing kick. It may have bounced through for a goal. I think it has. Well done by Longmire. Geelong obviously remembered being beaten at Cadenia Park back in round three. Well, obviously they came out and uh, it's amazing. Uh, a couple of weeks earlier, it may have been the week before, they were belted by St Kilda by 70-odd you know, points. Um, Geelong changed their tactics somewhat after the St Kilda game. I know that there was a, there was a crisis meeting down at the club and uh, the players all voted uh, in conjunction with Malcolm that they were going to play attacking football. They weren't going to go with any tags and they really went for it. Um, maybe a few of our, our blokes were starting to feel the pinch. It had been a long season. We'd been up for a long while mentally as well as physically. Maybe a few of our blokes were dreaming. And, well, I, don't, I know for sure that a few of our blokes were dreaming and thinking about the uh, finals. Gee, Geelong, Geelong really belted us. We hadn't been, uh, we'd had half defeats all year, one and two points and three points and, and seven points and even four, 14 or 15 points. You could easily say they were, only, they were half losses and uh, maybe this was in the back of our mind and gee, we got belted that day, 90 odd points and uh, they were awesome. It stopped the ruse in their tracks and for the first time they realised it was going to get a lot tougher. The, the defeat made us sort of really sit down and analyse everything and, and got this uh, uh, business about uh, putting the cart in front of the horse and thinking about finals out of the place. You could understand the mentality around North Melbourne too. We hadn't been in the, in the finals for a long while. Um, people were so excited. It's very hard to stop that buzz and, and put a lid on it. And I suppose that that opportunity gave us a chance to really sit down and take, uh, take stock of ourselves. So you did all that up at Barugan? Yeah, we had a very good weekend. We went up there with the, the players and their wives and their kids and it was uh, we really focused again and built on our team spirit and had a look where we were going and 
I think it was uh, beneficial. You know, we got a few blokes back from injury the next game, and uh, um, you know, we played Richmond at, uh, at the MCG, and we had Rock and Kerry come back into the side, and uh, um, it was a terrible day. It was windy and swirly, and uh, the, probably the windiest day I've experienced at the MCG, and, and had a good win, and I thought we were back on, uh, back on the road again. Down the ground is Roberts, but his fingertips to it, goes back and gets it, lines up goal and snicks it through. Going anywhere either, now it's Crocker a chance. Spears the pass out to Allison, he can kick a goal, 30 metres up directly in front, goes goalward and gets it. Any game that you play in the state is always going to be hard to win. Um, the Swans had definitely improved under Ron Bressy and uh, we knew it was going to be tough. And any, any game away from uh, Melbourne is always going to be hard. We went up there and uh, you know, the Swans came out and hit us really hard at the start. And uh, I suppose at quarter time there were a couple of points in front. Uh, we knew we had a battle on our hands, but to our guys' credit, uh, well, we got on top and, and won by 10 goals in the finish. And it was a good win to go up to Sydney uh, and defeat them by over 60 points. Immediately after the Swans game, Pagan began stressing the match against Footscray. Over the top of West, plays on to Crocker. Crocker sends it back towards centre half foot. Wine camps oh. in front all. Nasty clash of heads there. Carey over the top, terrific grab. Here's Carey from right on the 50. Good looking kick, it's a goal. The second. Left foot towards half forward. Nishenko in front. Oh, Hunter went off the ground. Didn't succeed in doing much with it. More rebounds to Schwoss. Might have been a push there. Nothing for it, says the umpire. Play continues. Allison, snapshot. Is accurate. McDowell, great shot. They have words on the other side with Ashenko, and the ball is coming out in their direction. Over the top, Archer. Stanfield's kick up towards centre wing. Not too much distance with Ooh. the kick. Smith paddles it back. Ramiro, opportunity for the hand pass. Let's go. Blakey. Oh, beautiful kick by the former Fitzroy star. Kicks down to Longmire, who marks. And what a forward wants is the ball to be delivered into the forward line quickly so you can catch the opponent out. Shot at goal is true. North on the burst in the first quarter. And it comes to Allison, who's already kicked one goal. Which came from a hand pass from John Longmire, who's in this action again. Couldn't take the mark there. And Fitzgerald defenders able to tie it up. Quill comes up with a football, but it's going to be a bounce. And John Longmire, gee, I hope he hasn't done his knee. He's clutching the back of it, and that doesn't look good. No mark taken by Sexton. Ball spills free in front of the pack, enables Roberts to do the tidying up work. And had more time than he really should have been allowed. Kicks over the head of Hunter, twisted on by Keary. Opportunity for Allison, who can kick a goal from there. One bounce, two bounce, he'll go all the way. Six points to the Roos coming up. Fitzgerald again into attack. Nicholson kicks towards the right half forward flank. No mark taken there. Stevens, German, Blakey, and now Archer. And North Melbourne. Carey looking for something. Man on the forward line. Forward, yes. Man who had the job on Grigich early on getting this chess mark. Maybe his name is a centre-half forward for Claremont in WA, but of course, coming to this team, no chance of playing there. Not much. As Carey was injured, he's kicked accurately. To goal, North coming back. High one down towards half-forward. Smith goes up off terrific now. What a defender. One of the best in the competition. Lays it off to Laidley. Laidley goes down towards half-forward. In front, Archer again. And you can sense that North Melbourne have steeled themselves now. They sense the challenge. They sense it's for the season in many respects. Across the ground, Ashenko goes up, takes the mark. Will kick from right on the 50. Big Alex kicks. It's a good looking effort, too. It's a goal. Darcy should get there first in front of Allison and will do. No support for him, though. Allison was held. Could have got a free kick. Carey comes back with it. And North really have to find something quickly. Punch away from Mishenko. It comes to McAdam. Maybe he can supply it. Snapshot is a great one and through for full points. Back in the middle. Mishenko gets it down. 
Roberts dragged off it. Nicely done by Allison. Pyman forward of the wing. Kicks inside the 50. Man's the target. Over the top, fisted away by Nicholson. McAdam laconically gets it back to Roberts. Roberts kicks a goal. It's home. Looks for the hand pass. Darcy overruns it. Good backup support from Hunter through some heavy traffic. Tries to get it to Atkins. Wasn't a good kick in the end. Pyman kicks it over the head of his teammate down there at Allison from the boundary line. A snapshot. Oh, what a terrific kick. Wide, well, gee, Mr. Markey certainly should have taken. Ramiro. Ooh, he crashed heavily. Good mark. Archer. Archer. Funny run up. In result was okay. It's a goal. Must be concerning Dennis Pagan. He's not playing well at the moment. He was a prime mover earlier. He certainly was. He uh, polled quite a few early Brownlow boats. Stevens kicks to the edge of the square. Bounce important here. Favors North Melbourne. Archer shovels it out for Roberts. Inside 50. He's a good kick on the run. But can't bend this one. There's a free kick. So Roberts. Inside 50. Distance won't be a problem. Accuracy, maybe. He's going to be close. I think he's got it. He has. A close quarters to Stevens. Stevens inside the 50, Carey up in front, Stanfield behind, under pressure, gives it away, McAdam measures the kick from 40, bends it back, it's a goal, North are coming back. It looks like continuing next year with Footscray, 300 games plus, kicks it straight to Rushenko, might have been better to go to Darcy in midfield. It's Blakey's turn, long looping hand pass, under Pyman, back to Blakey, he was nearly caught by Liberatore, but still North retain possession. McAdam back to Stevens, who gave it to him in the first place. Stevens inside, 50, down towards full forward, at the back, a mark. It's there to man. Well done by John Blake. He set that up and some terrific reflexive handball in the centre square by North. A long kick to this man, man. Peter Mann gets his second. Stevens finally pounces on a tackle by Barrow. Too late, one-on-one -on -one duel. Darcy fists the ball away. And you'll see Pyman pick it up quickly. Kicks it towards half forward. Carey to Roberts. This could be a goal. He can kick long and does. And what's he done with that one? It's there. Good tackle. But it is still there. Tackle was by Clarkson on Callan. Is that out of bounds? No, says the umpire. Play on. German does. Centering kick from him. Archer. Great mark. It's a lot like Hawthorne and uh, Ian Bremner of old. Good pair of hands. McCann well within kicking distance 30 meters out pretty well directly in front has kicked the goal kicks across his body down towards uh, right half forward flank clarkson good pace stanfield's got him but has taken him high and clarkson will take the free kick tries to center the ball mccadam leads out well to take the mark in front of hunter now he's going to come off he's going to come off now mccadam goes at goal and has kicked it. Still North Melbourne won't lie down. Well, it was so important to us. We had to, uh, to I think that was round 22, we had to uh, defeat Footscray to finish on top. Um, we, we focused on that and set ourselves and were very confident uh, of beating Footscray. Um, it wasn't to be. Footscray came out um, and really... Uh, really ripped us apart uh, early in the piece there and it was a, a real tough battle and uh, gee, we were very disappointed at the end. Uh, we knew we were better than that. Sure, we'd had injuries and we'd had uh, um, a few blows go down. I suppose you'll, to lose your, 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 your full forward who'd played such a, a major part uh, in, in the size um, uh, performance during the year to go off you know, after him looking set for a big day did affect us. Um, you know, opposition sides have uh, uh, injuries as well, but um, you know Johnny was such an important part to our side. And uh, yeah, we didn't we didn't play as well in the first half as I would have liked. But to our credit, we played great football after being so far behind at half time, and with a bit of luck, um, we had all all the uh, all of the ball in the second half and, and really couldn't convert. We missed some easy goals, um, and I, I honestly believe that we should have ran over Footscray at the finish. It uh, it wasn't to be. Uh, Footscray were too good on the day. But there was more disappointment to come. John Longmire was expecting the worst as he went to the orthopaedic surgeon in Kew today. And an hour later, he emerged after being told the news he'd been dreading. No, unfortunately, it's probably as bad as it can go. So it's just, um, 
a matter of facing up to it now and getting it done as soon as I can. Longmire ruptured the lateral ligament in his left knee during Saturday's loss to Footscray at the MCG. I just went up for a mark and, um, and landed awkwardly and uh, my foot stayed in one position and the rest of my body twisted the other way and uh, heard a little bit of a crack and uh, that was about it. After six years without playing in the finals, the big full forward is naturally shattered. That's what it's obviously all about and uh, to miss out it's just uh, a, real, a real big disappointment. It was a much happier Brett Allison who also thought his season was over after going down in the final quarter. Went to my left and I just went to to push off my leg to change direction to go to the ball and uh, I just remember pain in my knee and, and being on the ground as if uh, I didn't have a leg to stand on or anything. But the knee is only jarred and he's a chance of playing West Coast. And despite limping into the finals, Allison says the Kangaroos will be primed for action. I think you'll find that it'll be a different North Melbourne this week. We've got everything to play for. This is what we've been working for all year and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll come through. Buckley, centering kick. Carey, well done, Jakovic punched it away. Allison clever to Swash, good footy. Swash goes with a long one. Look at this for a goal. That'll lift them. Boots it high towards midfield. Hines is the target. Watch Blakey over the top. Got a fist on it. Well played. Buckley waits in front. Boots it down towards half forward. Coming across the ground is Roberts. He's outnumbered. The boundary line could be his ally here. No, he keeps it in. Oh, very lax defence. Roberts oh. will kick a goal. <laughs> Larkin's had a couple of touches. Still Larkin. Handball inside. Man wants a good bounce. It eludes him for the moment. Now he steadies. Goes with a long kick. McAdam at the back. Never got into the frame. Play on. Chance for Fairley. Left foot snap. A goal. Third go. Shoal's got the job on Lewis. Fairly provides the first lead. Carey's back there. Ball on the ground. Allison, surely to kick a goal. And North right back in this ball game. Well, suddenly, a bit of a turnaround here. Suddenly, they can find no inspiration. Wilson, was it a mark? Here's uh, McAdam, who's only had uh, two kicks. That's his second one. A high one. Rock, Warsfold. Warsfold nearly a one-hander. Rock couldn't get away from Jakovic. Pineman got it back. Here's Rock. North need a goal. Centering kick is a good one to Roberts. Well played by Rock. So he's rarely missed out. And he's lining up now for his second goal today. Good looking kick of another one. Didn't see what happened though, but Stevens was put on the ground, so he's getting the free, and the ball was taken off the West Coast Eagles. Stevens immediately sends play to the outer side. Crocker could have got a free, picked up by Scholl. High floated out towards centre half forward. Jakovic, who's been the master. Socket forward by Allison. Allison left it behind. Was he pushed in the back? The crowd won it. Meantime, Main Waring picks it up. Hart's in trouble. Shrugs a tackle, but left the ball behind. Pyman knocks it across to McAdam. McAdam was taken high. And oh, he'll the get advantage. the free kick. Why wasn't the advantage paid? Very important kick this one for North. McAdam, 68 goals for the season. And just outside the 50, normally gets a lot of distance on his kicks, and this is no exception. Great kick, goal. Here's Scholl on the outer side, a chance to send North back into attack. Rock, 65 metres from goal, Roberts. It's knocked away by Hart, but over the shoulder, says the umpire. Uh, this one's absolutely vital from 50 metres. Roberts has timed it very well and kicked a goal. And Brennan did that on that occasion. He chips it out towards half-back. That's a dangerous kick. Scholl has taken the mark and now has a chance to punish the Eagles. From 50 metres out, Craig Scholl kicks and kicks well. Held up. Handball by Archer, missing the body. Here's Stevens at centre wing. Chips it to centre half forward. Chance now for North. Rock running onto it from 50 metres. Goes with a long one. And North Melbourne with a chance here. Allison from the side. Still Allison. The tackle on him OK. Pyman snaps for goal. And might have kicked it. He has. Their previous matches, both against St Kilda. Early on in the season. Rock to Larkin. To Stevens. Still at the 50 metre line. Going to ground was Allison, getting a free kick. It's a pretty good kick, Allison, normally. Goes short, chance here for Roberts. Good kick by Allison, and Roberts in the hole. 
and Carey most disappointing before he was injured. Roberts goes back and kicks his four. You know, I suppose in retrospect, things did start to fall apart. Um, it's a Brisbane game with injuries. Um, it had been a long season. The, the North Melbourne players' input has been been sensational. They'd really given everything they had. We came out, um, and I suppose it was our first final. I didn't think it would have affected us uh, in the way that it did. We just didn't play anywhere near our capabilities. Unfortunately, we never got a chance to redeem ourselves. We were out in our, out in our ear, um, you know, first weekend, and it was a pretty disappointing way to finish the year off when we promised so much. Um, during the season and I, you look at the grand final this week and you see that Carlton and Essendon are in there and when we played them we, we beat them convincingly both sides and both by 38 points. Um, there were many reasons why we didn't play well uh, against West Coast and uh, obviously we've got to try and work on that uh, and get them right. There was no one great reason. Um, form, injuries, long season, lack of strength, um, there, were, there were numerous other uh, areas that we sort of fell down in and we hope we get it rectified for uh, next year. Um, we certainly believe that we will. Um, we've got a coach who's going to have an important part off season and not come in five minutes before the season starts. And I hope we plan it properly and I hope we get it right. We're certainly leaving no stone unturned. We want to make sure we gain an edge. We want to make sure we get the, the best possible preparation for the North Melbourne Football Club off season to give us a, uh, a chance to continue to go forward. I know all the players are, uh, are certainly hurt by it. Uh, it happened so quickly and even talking to the players after the uh, West Coast game on the Monday night with our second still in the finals, they couldn't believe the, uh, the finality of it all. It, it, it had finished. We don't get another chance and they really wanted a chance to redeem themselves because they believe and know that they are better um, than what they showed on, the, on, on the, our game out at AFL Park. Did North Melbourne simply peak too early? Yeah, I think that, I think that's probably one of the reasons uh, that po it possibly did happen that way. Um, we had to uh, win the respect of the football public and our supporters, and and get ourselves back on top. You know, from the from the moment I took over, virtually nearly every game was a final for us. When it's all said and done, 1993 was a tremendous year for the North Melbourne Football Club. And with a pre-season to look forward to this time, what will Dennis Pagan do to take the club even further? Yeah, well, we want to make sure that we uh, recruit well. We want to make sure if there's any possibility of doing any uh, pre-draft trades, we, we get the best for the North Melbourne Football Club. We want to make sure we give the best uh, possible off-season preparation we can. We're going to go into it in a very extensive manner and make sure we get that right, you know, as, as strength-wise, uh, uh, power-wise, and endurance-wise, agility and flexibility-wise. We want to make sure we, we get everything as, as, as good as we possibly can to give the North Melbourne Football Club a very good opportunity to perform uh, next season.
Australian Football Video presents Vintage Football from the Seven Sport Classics Collection. Seven's Magic Moments and the Sensational 70s. Football action to get your blood boiling. In Seven's Magic Moments, thrill to 30 minutes of unrivaled football history. From the brilliance of Baldock to the antics of Jacko. And the Sensational 70s. Highlights from one of Aussie Rule's finest decades. Magic Moments and Sensational 70s. Two magnificent Seven Sport Classics from Australian Football Video.